Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrated pan in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And once again, welcome to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is episode 50. We've made it to 50 so far, folks. It is June the 15th on a Monday. And I'm here with my best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. This week, we decided to, uh, the theme of, of the episode for this week is um, utilizing free online courses for artists, either to improve your craft or to uh, improve your social media marketing or your art career strategies. There is a lot out there, and it's really not necessary, especially if you're a poor artist like me, poor starving artist, it's not necessary to spend a lot of money to get education and it's very important as a working artist we continually need to educate ourselves so if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com that's talkartpodcast.com you'll see the listing of some of our favorite uh, videos that are on youtube and um, we'll kind of talk about how uh, watching some of these videos how to improve some of our art diane you want to start the conversation off what's uh what's some of your favorites that you uh, you kind of watch every once in a while to improve your craft and or marketing or, or what, just your art career in general i don't um i don't follow anybody in particular all the time except for the ones that we've done as a group but um usually if i'm struggling with something as far as painting i'll look for somebody that's doing um something similar to what i i'm trying to figure out and i'll see what if they have any kind of videos on youtube to um help me figure it out too but um i use most of it i think most of what i follow is uh for the business side of things because that's really where i need more help (laughs) than Uh the actual painting I mean, but there's a lot of good painters out there, and there's a lot of information on YouTube. There's, there's just too many to even count, but you can pretty much look up any topic that you want to paint and find, you know, a bunch of videos that will help you guide you through that. So it's, yeah, whenever whenever you when you first recommended that I use the uh, uh, walnut oil based uh, paints. And of course, I didn't even 
first of all, I didn't know they existed until you mentioned. And then I looked up on, on YouTube on just how to use them. So I've watched uh, quite a few videos with regards to that and got me up to speed real quick on the, how to uh, properly utilize and prepare the canvases and uh, the paint. I'm still learning, but uh, you have to use them. But, to learn. I mean, that's where YouTube comes in handy because um, materials change. I mean, there was no <laughs> paint like that when I got out of college. You know, it was all the old, old you know, versions of oil paints. And even acrylics were just starting. So there was like no real, you know, um, lessons or whatever and how to use them. It was, um, I don't even know, the, yeah, computers weren't even around then. So, you know, we didn't have that. Yep. <clears throat> we just had to buy stuff and experiment on our own and hope it turned out. I remember that. But now you can find just about anything on YouTube or somewhere. They were horrible back then. They were. <laughs> they were. <laughs> yeah. I can remember when acrylics first came out. It was I bought and I bought some, and it was they were the viscosity was absolutely horrid. <laughs> just horrid. God, <laughs> like <paint> plastic. <laughs> yeah, <It> was terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was just They've improved a lot. <laughs> yeah, they have. They they are a lot. A lot the viscosity is just a lot nicer than they were back then it was just horrible stuff gosh they didn't even want to mix with water even back then <laughs> yep constance uh, have you got any any recommended uh videos that you you follow or any courses in particular or what's your what what's your experience or or how do you use a lot utilize these uh videos for training on for artists well um it depends on what I'm wanting to figure out at the time. Um, I was working in pastels, so I was using um, Marla, Marla Baguetta for a while, and she's an excellent pastel, pastel teacher. And then I just immediately, for some reason, hopped back into oil painting. And um, so I've just... Uh, whenever I get frustrated and want to figure out what what I want to paint or how I want to paint, you know, then I just go in and uh, use either Stefan or, or, or just go look, mainly just go online to look at, um, right now I want to paint still lifes like the old masters. So I just go and look at the still lifes mainly not really a video but just go and look for inspiration just look at the paintings themselves to to kind of get a feel for what i am trying to to get for my own work you know um just that you know so yeah well the uh... I've, I've also i've also found a lot of people on instagram um you, know, you can just do, use the tags and find somebody that's doing something that you want to learn that's about. That's a good idea. Find people, and some a lot of them have um, videos on their Instagrams, or yeah. you can look them up further. You know, I hadn't thought about that because Pinterest has a lot of a lot of paintings, and just anything you want to look at on Pinterest, you can just just type it in and look for that. But I hadn't thought about looking it up on Instagram. I could do that too. Yeah, I uh, recently, you know, I've jumped into oil painting and I had these, this oil paint set, what, since uh, December of last year. But I'll tell you, the, the number one person that motivated me to start oil painting, uh, I had been listening to, of course, Ste uh, Stephen Bauman's, you know, he's all in the oil painting and plain air. But I came across you know, our own uh, Kelly Folsom and we've had her on uh, the Artist Friends mm -hmm. podcast. And so I uh, watched a couple of her videos and I very much like her style. Mm -hmm. And I usually, a couple of times when I, when I got started creating art, you know, I would watch, you know, watercolor videos. And after a while I get kind of bored because it is kind of boring watching somebody else, you know, paint in a sense. And, it's like Stephen Bauman you know, says he doesn't uh, put up videos of him painting because he said he doesn't want you. He said you're you're learn his style. It won't be you. It'd be the style of whoever you're watching. You know that. 
So um, Kelly Folsom is a little bit different. I was watching her and I was like, wow, I can do that. You know, and so I was really impressed with the way she teaches. Her videos are short, you know, they're not real long. So I ended up watching a couple of hers, and then I jumped up and set my setting up and started painting. So I, so I give credit to, Carrie Fols to Kelly Folsom. And if you guys just go to uh, talkartpodcast.com, and you'll see the link. I think I put a link up there for uh, Kelly's uh, YouTube channel where she has some, some of her videos. And, of course, Stefan Bauman, he's, you know, the premium. I've implemented so many different things that he has talked about that, for me, they work. I feel a connection. He comes across very well. And, and that's, uh, that's what this is about, uh, which is why I'm glad that we have such a variety of uh, uh -huh. videos on YouTube because not everybody can come across to you you know, and, or you can, you can watch them and you can buy all the paints and buy the materials and the, mix up the colors the way they do and play the video over and over again. And it still comes out crap. <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah. that's part of finding yourself as an artist, you know, it's Absolutely. just, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you know, Diane had mentioned you, you watch some for business and, and what do you think about, uh, we've, we've, recommended videos from Sergio Gomez. He's besides being an artist and he also offers, you know, coaching class and everything, but he puts up quite a bit of videos for uh, strategy and uh, marketing and everything. Do you, 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 yeah, I mean, all of them. I mean, there's so many. And I, 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 I listen, uh, excuse me. I listen to a lot more podcasts than I do videos for that kind of stuff. And so I'll, I'll have a plan when I'm doing something else usually, but, um, they all pretty much tell you kind of the same stuff, but they all do it in a different way. And sometimes it makes more sense when one person says it for some, for whatever reason, and somebody else can say almost exactly the same thing and it doesn't, doesn't click with you for some reason. So, um, yeah, I, I listen to quite a few podcasts, um, for business. There's a lot of them. And I think so that, many. that's, that's the connection aspect of it. Um, the, you know, you, you have to connect with the, the with the presenter. And um, this is not to say that the other ones are bad. It's just that you have, you know, your own, you know, personal connection. And, um, and some of them are, are talking about something specific that at that time is something you need. And the other stuff they're talking about doesn't really, you know, isn't something you're looking for at the time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you hear stuff and you get one thing out of it and then you'll listen to it again, you know, six months from now or whatever. And I say, I don't remember them saying that, but all of a sudden it clicked and you're like, you know, cause you're looking for that thing then you're ready so for it. it. Yeah. So it's, I listened to a lot of them over and over again and different, you know, in months apart <clears throat> and I get different things out of them all the time. Uh -huh. And, Another good example is, you know, I've listened to, I actually enrolled for a little while, but then I had to uh, drop out because I couldn't afford it anymore. That's uh, Brennard Carey in his course. And uh, one of the, um, some of his videos he talked about on the, how uh, artists can get discovered. And his emphasis was in uh, participating in the nonprofit or small gallery or small museum exhibitions. And because uh, he said a lot of your curators and your uh, critics, that's that's where they find the artists that later on they present in the larger galleries, in the larger exhibitions. And it's taken me over a year, but it's worked. Uh, I got notified today that my art was is going to participate, be participating in this called the Creative Distancing, Distancing Exhibition in uh, south texas in the corpus christi, corpus christi area in a, in a museum what they've done they um i sent them uh, five images five jpegs and they selected three pieces and they've put it into a video and then they're going to for the entire month of july and uh, into middle of august they're going to project it onto the museum walls inside inside one of the museum's galleries and this is a little bitty 
museum that is sponsored by the uh, Texas uh, a and AMM University, but uh, it's where possible as Brandon Carey says, it's where your big, your curators and critics will probably show up. So another example of a, I took that webinar. That was a free webinar where he discussed that. And then I uh, started searching and uh, got on a mailing list and they sent an invitation to me uh, last month. So I uh, sent my images to him. Hey, I'm taking my baby steps to someday I'm going to be in the Guggenheim. I'm going to be in a Whitney. I'm going to be in the Chicago Art Institute someday. <laughs> but this is all through, and it didn't cost me anything. That's the point. It cost me nothing. There was no entry fee, and it was just send us your images. And, you know, and I'm very, very honored and pleased because if you – I'll be putting up on my Facebook page the link with the video that they uh, – uh, created with with the exhibition with the other artists the majority of the artists are the modern contemporary abstract artists and here i am one of the few very few representational artists but three of my representational images is in there so i feel like i am holding the, the flag up for the representational artists amongst all those modern art abstract artists <laughs> but to the point you can educate yourself and make your connections without spending money. It's applying yourself. It's application. And I have known artists and have spent lots of money for these courses and these coaches and haven't really made, had that much traction. Uh, you can do this. No one's going to do it for you. Paying somebody some money is not going to do it for you. You have, you have to do it yourself. Uh, a couple other links on here that I mentioned is, of course, Rafi. Now, Rafi, uh, Constance likes Rafi because I guess she has a connection with him. He's from her area where she used to live, you know, down there in, uh, what, Pensacola, you know, Florida. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, Rafi, uh, I like a lot of his I'm – gain, I'm gaining an affinity for him um, because he has various uh, recommendations and – various issues and how to deal, deal with the uh, things that come up in an artist and the constants. Uh, what's some of the videos that Rafi has recommended? Can you have, think of any off the top of your head that uh, you've enjoyed? They're just a really cute couple. Um, Rafi and Clee, um, they, they talk about, you know, just the different aspects of being in the business that they're in. Uh, she's a jeweler and he's an artist and, and, um, they show at Palafox, or they used to show up. I don't know if they still show at Palafox, but they show at different at different places in the South that I used to show in when I was living down there. But they're also on uh, Patreon. Yeah, they. It's interesting. He they started out. Uh, they didn't make that many videos. Now I guess they're pretty much uh, regular. You know, they they're on a regular production schedule. Mm -hmm. But um, what was interesting is. If you look at some of the older videos, his wife, I guess, uh, Clee, uh, Cleo, Clee as he calls her, she would always be sitting in the back and would always be kind of blurred out. You could hear her talking, but you could not never see her. <laughs> and she actually went in, in an interview that, that they posted that they had uh, uh, conducted with a, uh, another podcast. I guess they were guests on, a, on another podcast show. She addressed that. She said that when they started – she was very shy and would not purposely would sit way in the back so that you couldn't hardly see her. Now she's up front there. She is right up front there with uh, Rafi, and you could just you could see the difference, you know. She's gotten past that. <laughs> exactly, and that's it's cute. And I think that that should serve as an inspiration and motivation, especially you know, because all this is all part of the market marketing strategy. Artists, we have to put ourselves out there, and if some of us are shy for videos, you know. Hey, Clee is a good example. <laughs> it takes a little like while anything. to get past being, sh being, you know, your shyness, you know, and and uh, and putting yourself out there. It takes time to get. Just like anything else, you have to practice doing it. Uh -huh. So I mean, we've gotten a lot better doing these pot, these, you know, <laughs> podcasts since oh, we yeah. started. Um, 
I know. I think some people. Got on the visas. Got. Some people uh, listen. Uh, if they listen to the early ones. We sound kind of staged and uh, kind of forced. Now we're just free, free flowing, and we just talk away. And I, I try to keep us on on agenda. But if we go off agenda once in a while, talking about chickens and goats and whatnot, and uh, <laughs> we're about ready to wrap this up. But I want to hear a story of Constance. How is your baby doing? Constance has a baby. Yes, I do. We have a bottle baby. Um, I don't know what happened. He just wouldn't drink from his mama. And so we are taking care of him. He drinks four bottles of of milk a day. <laughs> so big, it's quite big, a production. How big are the bottles? How many ounces are the bottles? I don't I don't they're at least a a half a gallon half a gallon of formula. We make cow a formula. baby, a calf. <laughs> Yeah, it's a calf. Forgot, she forgot to say it's a calf. I wondering. <laughs> yeah, it's a calf, and, he, and he's too big to pick up. So, and he's getting bigger all the time. And it's he drinks a gallon of a gallon of formula every what I call formula. We put he has two eggs. Each bottle has two eggs, a quarter cup of of caro syrup, uh, uh, milk, and and still I put distilled water in it. Uh, we don't like to put our regular water in anything. <laughs> Seven known print. That's cancer causing car carcinogens in it. That's so we go distill water. Anyway, he gets four of those a day. <laughs> two in the morning, two in the evening. So I'm making four bottles a day. <laughs> That's the reason why, folks, I wanted I wanted to listen to uh wanted her to say how big the bottles was so you guys could get an idea. Yeah, they're they're at least uh I don't know. They're big <laughs> with a great big old nipple it's on the end of it. They're not baby bottles. They're like at least, a, you know, I don't know. They're huge. <laughs> he sucks on them really hard. <laughs> okay. Now let me get us back it's on. the funny. Okay. Last week we, uh, we each said we were going to uh, set a goal and, uh, Constance, did you reach your personal goal? The goal, what well, you were going to do, what sunset or a right? And I did not get to the sunset, but I did get a painting finished. Okay. <laughs> I got two painting finished. And what I and if Constance, when we get done here, if Constance will send me that image, I'm going to include that in the YouTube version of this podcast so you folks can uh, take a look at it. It's really beautiful. okay. She did a great job. And Diane, did you reach your goal? Partially. <laughs> I'm, I've organized, I reorganized my studio, so I've got most of it done. It's just trying to tweak it better so it works I'm, better. I'm trying, and I put I put Diane on the spot before we started recording. I asked her if she'd send me a picture. So was, hopefully we'll, we'll have a, a snapshot of what she's reorganized. And we'll put that on the, uh, on the YouTube version. And for my goals, I said two or more paintings. And I did four. Four pieces of artwork. I did two oil paintings. All right. And two watercolors, and it felt so good. It just yeah. felt so. I did these one after the other. I just kept on going. I think I started like on a Wednesday evening and finished them all up by Friday afternoon. And I was, I was, I was energized. Uh, the I posted them on on the Facebook, and I will certainly put those up on the YouTube. Their uh, the oil paintings were uh, kind of Van Gogh. The ghost of Van Gogh was in my mind. I painted my old work shoes. <laughs> and But they were a lot of fun. You know, I'm really getting getting into this oil painting and uh, enjoying it quite a bit and uh, learning uh, how to push that paint around more. So I think that's going to be it. Do you you want to set a goal for next week? I, thought that. <laughs> I always have stuff that I have to get done. Part but. part two, part two of your studio. Maybe you can, you know. Yeah, I'm still working on that. I that it's I have to work in it just to try to tweak it better so things are in okay. where they need to be. <laughs> how about so I guess I'll I'll do that this week. How about you, Constance? You want to say? Um. Yeah, I need. I'm working on building a backdrop for my paintings. And I bought the wood, so I need to paint it and make it. It's a, you know, a three-way thing to go behind them. Okay. So, yeah. Make sure you, when you get it done, you take photographs. Send me photographs so we can. Yeah. Yep. And yep. I'm just, yep. I'm just going to continue since I was so energized and um, to uh, to paint. I'm yes, this week I don't know if I'll do four. Certainly, 
again, more than two, but who knows? I get started there. If I start earlier, maybe tomorrow, I'll, uh, I'll instead of waiting until Wednesday, I'll start Tuesday. I'll get up, quit watching videos. And speaking of videos, that's another thing. The YouTube video thing can be a rat hole. You can <laughs> video after video after video, and then the next thing you know, five hours has gone by, and oh crap, I gotta do. <laughs> yep. They're informative, but they can be, they can, you can go down the rat hole, as they say, or the rabbit hole. Okay, well, let's wrap this up for June the 15th. This is the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 50. Maybe we ought to have, should have had some kind of celebration, but we're up to 50, 50 episodes. 50 unbelievable. episodes. Unbelievable. That's almost a year's worth. Yeah. <laughs> So next week it'll be 51 and we'll be headed on the, we, we reached the peak and now we're going to be head sliding down. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> climbing to the 100 mark. Yeah, climbing to 100 mark. So I'm going to say goodbye to Constance and Diane. Bye-bye you two. And I'll let you guys uh, say bye, Diane. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Bye, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, y'all. Good night, folks, and thank you for listening. Hey, please give us a thumbs up. Send us comments. Thanks for stopping in. Let us, let us know what you think of these so we can keep on going, so we can reach 100 podcasts, okay? Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists... Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kemp. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkellartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkell at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.